Hello, true duelists. My name's Craig Fee, and welcome to the new card report. Did you know Legacy of Destruction still has some cards missing? Like, as I'm filming this, there's still seven more cards to be revealed? Does it feel like there's just been going on longer to anyone else? Or am I just dumb? Really though, who cares? Because it's on to the point of this video, the core set support for the Valiant Smashers decks. Here we go. Memento gets two new cards from this set, starting with Memento Tland? <laughs> Memento Tlan? Is that really? Memento Tlan. Memento Tlan Twin Dragon. A level 7 light thunder fusion with 2800 attack and 2100 defense that'll lead any two Memento monsters as fusion material to summon. On fusion summon, it can destroy any Memento monster in your hand or face up on your field. And if you do, it lets you add up to two Memento monsters with different names from each other from their deck to the hand. It also makes it so that monsters destroyed by Memento monsters in battle are banished, and if it itself is destroyed when it was fusion summoned, you can summon a level 6 or lower Memento monster from your graveyard. Well, hot damn. Memento Pendulum Call on legs, more or less. It's a pr pr pretty damn solid effect, isn't it? And it's Thunder Twin Dragon. I have nostalgia for that card because of an incident where one friend stole it and I got it back. It was a whole fucking shenanigans. Need, need to see that card again. And it can even pop itself to get that search effect off, which is ideal if you uh, could avoid Imperm or Valor with it, but like, that's not how this works. It's destroy end if you do, so if they negate it, it just doesn't. It just doesn't, but hey, you know what? At least it gets itself off the board if you want to go all in on the deck's gimmick of having Mr. Beeg on the field by himself. It also is a Thunder Fusion monster, which means you can use Thunder Dragon Fusion to summon this, which might be something. It can, you know, shuffle back cards from the Banished Zone as well, if I'm remembering correctly. It's, there's, there's something there, right? And there's two light monsters now with Memento, one accessible from the extra deck, so it, that, that lends itself to some potential chaos shenanigans? Surely that's on theme for the Nostalgia deck, right? I mean, just shoehorning a chaos strategy into a bunch of useless vanillas is... That, that's a whole series into of itself, isn't it, right? I don't even know what I just said there. Moving on. Memento Tlan Fusion, I'm not convinced I'm saying that right, is the way to summon out our new fusion monster in Archetype. The quick play spell that in the main phase can fusion summon any fusion monster, but has to use a Memento monster as one of the materials. And if a monster in your possession was destroyed by a card effect this turn, you can also shuffle Memento monsters from your graveyard back into your deck to count as materials as well. It also has a grave effect to banish itself, destroy a monster you control, and if you do, you can add one Memento Spell or Trap from the deck to the hand. Which doesn't say it can't search itself, so I, I guess it can search itself, huh? That's something. It's not, it's not nothing, right? I don't know that you really need to make two fusions in a turn in this deck, but a chance to summon out the twin Thunder Dragon on the opponent's turn, and then use its effect to search out Goblin and Key Mace, your level ones that have the effect to discard and make your Memento big boss monster untargetable and also a Snatch Steal. That's, uh, there, there's something there, right? I, I, I don't remember Beeg's name. He's on screen probably at this point. This guy, this is what the deck is about. It doesn't really sound all too bad, all things considered. Between these two cards and Attic Ghost from, what was it, Phantom Nightmare, I think Memento has gotten much better in regards to what its game plan is compared to at release. It's certainly no Rescue Ace, but it's a very solid deck on its own. I mean, I've seen Normal Summon Goblin being a full line to the boss monster and the trap if it goes uninterrupted, which is cool. I don't think it's a good deck, but it's a fine one, which is impressive for any deck which is playing a version of Karibo, really, in my opinion. I love them, but typically they just suck. Valmonica, meanwhile, got three cards, including a non-Pendulum main deck monster. Celatrice, which I'm not giving a second try on, whatever the fuck this name is, Valmonica, is a level 4 water spellcaster with 1200 attack and defense that on normal or pendulum summon can add one Valmonica card from your deck to your hand except for a copy of itself. It also cannot be targeted for attacks while you control a differently named monster, and if it's sent to the graveyard while you have two Valmonica cards in your pendulum scales, you can add this right back to your hand. So that's cute. It's like a super stratos. It'll add any archetypal card, monster, spell, or trap, and it can recur itself if you use it as link material or something. I don't know if it just hits the graveyard. It's crazy. That's super playable, right? It literally has to. It's super stratos that self recurs. If that does not make it playable, literally nothing will. And I don't think anything else needs to be said. 
Valmonica Invitare is a new quick play spell with a fat hard once per turn that on activation will let you use one of two effects. One effect will summon a Valmonica monster from your deck, but after this resolves, you'll only be able to activate the effects of Valmonica monsters on the field for the rest of the turn. And the other effect will require you to control a non-Pendulum Valmonica monster, but will let you add two Pendulum monsters from the deck, one to your hand and one face up into your extra deck with different names. So that's a emergency teleport with a fairly brutal lock and or a, you know, pendulum call of sorts, just full Valmonica setup. Since the pendulum monsters have effects in hand to get the opposite scale, it's just full scales if you have one of them, which means you got scales and a monster to summon out to potentially go into your generic link ones. Almost certainly not, but you know, it's a, it's a generic force band deck, so you got a free four. That's, it's not nothing. It's Itali at its absolute worst. That's got to, again, that's gotta be playable. It's not like Valmonica's you know, drowning in ultra playable cards here. This is, at the very least, good. Valmonica Disharmonia is a normal spell that has a hard once per turn as well, and will place a resonance counter on a card in your pendulum scale that you can put a resonance counter on on activation, and will then apply one of the following effects. Either to gain 500 life points, and then you can add a banished Valmonica card from your banished pile to your hand, or if you take 500 damage, you can add a Valmonica card from your graveyard to your hand. So this one's like the weakest of the three because it died, it doesn't really do anything by itself, right? It's only as good as the card you're going to be getting. But on the other hand, you've now got Stratos and e Telly slash Jank Pendulum Call and, you know, a bit of extra recovery as well. So obviously this is only good in the regards to the fact that it kind of gets the ball rolling for those resonance counters since by itself it'll get two counters on a card because you activate it and place one resonance counter and then the life point thing happens and you get the other resonance counter, right? That's how Valmonica works if you're playing it purely. So that's that's cool and it's it sure is schnifty. I mean, they're playable. I don't know that they're super good, but they're playable. And really, in regards to Valmonica, that's phenomenal. That's, that's fantastic. It turns out, if you want to make a deck playable, you just give it a Stratos and an Emergency Teleport and a Pendulum Call. And then it goes from being whatever to like, well, now there's something, isn't there? Crazy how that works. And then the most interesting support, the Centurion cards, because they're the best post to be relevant in the competitive circles, or so the good folks say. Centurion Gargoyle 2 is a level 8 Dark Dragon with 2,000 attack and 3,000 defense that can send a face-up Centurion card you control to the grave to summon this card from your hand and will lock you out of summoning another copy of this for the rest of the turn. It also adds itself to the hand if it's sent to the grave as a synchro material and if it's a continuous trap, you can special summon this onto your field and then decrease its level by 4 if you so choose to do so. What a sentence. I mean, it's a solid bit of extension for the deck, and the level modulate down can help give the deck some access to level 8 synchro plays if they'd like. It's a nice little recurring body, although I don't really know that that's something that the deck was lacking. <laughs> like, the grind game of Centurion was already pretty solid, right? Am I wrong in saying that? Another body to loop over isn't the greatest thing. It's not bad. And really, I'm just more confused as to where the first gargoyle is. Why is this two? Why is there a set? Why, why is it level eight to four? Where's the two coming from? Are these numbers related? Almost certainly not. Let's just move on. To Centurion Arcolia, probably. Another level 12 dark synchro dragon for the deck with 3000 attack and defense, and it's fully generic. And let any tuner and any non-tuner and slap them together and look at, you got this thing right on your board, whether you want it or not. On Special Summon, this can add a Centurion card from your deck to your hand, which is pretty nice. It'll also make your face-up spell and trap cards unable to be destroyed by the card effects, which is cool. You could, you could give it that effect, and they did, and now it's there. It also has the last effect to, in the end phase, let you place a non-Synchro Centurion monster from your grave or banished zone into your spell and trap as a continuous trap. So there's been plenty of comments already about how Centurion now has their own level 12 Dark Synchro Dragon to go into uh, if slash when Calamity gets banned, which is like, yep, that's true. They do play a level 12 Dark Synchro Dragon already, so that, that that's true. Now they can play two, three, who knows, who knows? But like, as it is by itself, it's fine. The search is kind of better than the draw, broadly, because it's a search, so you get to pick what you get. And then like, Protecting your spell and traps pretty cool, although it doesn't save from Cyclone, but it's, you know, it's not nothing. 
it's protection for your back row, which is key no, because you know, all your monsters become back row. And it lets you get from the banished zone as well to place into the spell instead of just from the hand or grave like the Legadia does. So it's an alternative. It's not bad by any stretch. It's just, uh, am I crazy in saying that I'd have preferred it was a level eight? Is that is that wacko? I, I don't know. I, to be honest, I don't really have a ton to say here. It's the dark version of Legadia, but it objectively looks cooler. So like a win in that regard, but it's only slight. And last up today is Wake Up Centurion, a quick play spell that'll need a monster card face up in the spell and trap zone to use, and will let you declare a level of either four or eight, and then special summon a Centurion token that is a dark pyro monster with zero attack and defense, and a level equaling the declared level. But it cannot be used as fusion or link material. It can also be banished from the graveyard, this card I mean, not the token, and you can go ahead and send a Centurion card from your deck to the grave except for another copy of this. So that's a card too. You know, it's funny, this all feels like it's fine, but it doesn't seem to do a whole lot for the deck. Like not from what I can tell. It's just more bodies. It, it'll be like, you know, the token if you need it or Gargoyle 2 or the new level 12 for alternative sake, but they don't really change anything that the deck is doing. Like I guess hand traps and the engine to make some synchro plays isn't a bad thing, but yeah, you, you can play all of these or none of them, and the deck is going to be doing the exact same thing regardless, and that's tunneling into Calamity, because that's, <laughs> that's just what the deck is for the most part, isn't it? Which is a bit of a shame. I'd like the deck a lot more, or it'd be a lot more interesting to play against if there was more to it than just a fucking card lock. I mean, a level eight to do something meaningfully on the opponent's turn a little bit, you know, like maybe bounce monsters when it's special summoned, and then, you know, special summon it from the, it's just, there's, there's things they could do, or, you know, let, let, let the token be a tuner so that there's more than one tuner in the deck, maybe. With Calamity, I guess it's nice that the deck that's, you know, Calamity Turbo didn't get super crazy good support, but it just feels very underwhelming to me. Like, they probably all get played at one in the deck, but, uh, is that is that crazy good? Like, are we celebrating that? I don't know. You tell me. The, the, this was a pretty uneventful little segment here, wasn't it? I don't even know if I made a fucking joke. Uh, the, the, the joke was that the joke was me. I, I'm the fucking joke here, okay? Clown here talking about Centurion, like he knows what he's saying. That's it. You know what? Fuck it. Moving on. Wrap it up. Wrap it up with a shout outs to the sponsor. That's right, thanks as always to LIFD for the continued support. The number one way to support my channel currently and the true duelist way to put all the calamities from that Red Dragon Archfiend structure deck on display because you don't summon them because you're just playing with the boys and it's not the most competitively viable, but also it's three dudes in a room. We don't need to sweat it out that fucking hard. You know what I'm saying? I think you know what I'm saying. Every once in a while you can just, you know, play marginally less optimal builds in the name of everyone getting to play. And you know what you all can also do? You can also save 15% by using promo code YGOSTRATS. Forward in at the discount, you can click Click the link in the description, have it apply automatically, however you want to go about it. 15% off and it's all yours. One model or three, plain as you can see. So uh, thanks as always to LIFD for the support. And of course, thank you for watching. That'll wrap it up for this new card report. We're almost done with Legacy of Destruction. Uh, seven more cards. We'll see if I even talk about them. Until then, the regular update will be out on Friday as always. And I've been your host, Greg Fee. Thanks for watching. Please hit subscribe. And remember, the minute you do, not only will you become a true duelist, but your smoking Italian wife will be impressed. And she'll, she'll look at you and she'll say, yep, that's a true duelist. <laughs>